all through, cakes of soap were coming, some were empty. Now, for a technology transfer for this robotic part, this company obviously did not have the money or the wherewithal to go ahead and invest. So what did they do? At the end of the assembly line, they just kept a table fan. So what did the table fan do? All the empty packs automatically flew away. Right? Where am I coming from? Earlier in the day, there was a speaker who said, substitution is not simplification. Now, do we necessarily need to complicate where we are? Is that necessary? Can't we look at simpler solutions? Can't we look at what we have within ourselves before constantly saying this is not what is there, this is not how I do, this is not what I am for? What is innovation if not simplicity? We will need to look at simpler solutions. And how do we look at simpler solutions? Now, let me give you an example. Have you heard about the word osmosis? Somewhere in school, right? So technically, if I stick myself up to him for sufficient duration, some of his brain power should also come to me. <laughs> well, jokes apart, that is how we learn in our world of research insights, whatever you call it, data scientists. That is pretty much how you learn through osmosis. Now, where does this osmosis come from? And let me give you an example. Uh, hi, sir. I'm Praveen. Okay. What's your name? Pradeepta. Pradeepta. Um, do you know how a washing machine works? You'll have to prove it to me. How does it run? How does a washing machine run? I make put, the noise. Put the clothes inside yeah, and, and then, then how, what noise comes through? Noise comes through? Yeah, washing machine, you've never, you yeah, outsource it? Ah, I yeah. use it. <laughs> yeah, then okay. how does it go? You switch on, you what switch happens? switch on and then uh, the clothes <laughs> are inside. <laughs> Come yeah. on, give me the noise, yeah. give me a beat, what happens? <laughs> yeah. So uh, what do you use a washing machine for? Washing clothes. Clothes. Yeah. Now I come from India, I have a city called Punjab, a state called Punjab, I'm sorry. Uh, half of you, uh, those from India, would um, accuse me of being a Punjabi. Uh, I will happily accept it. Uh, but what is a washing machine used in the state of Punjab for? What is a washing machine used in certain areas in China and Mongolia? Can anybody hazard a guess? In Punjab, we have a very popular drink called lassi, where you got to beat. And the washing... Uh, Pradeepto, they only use it to make lassi. They don't alternate between washing uh, clothes and making lassi. Um, now, in Punjab, they use washing machines for making lassi in China. Certain parts of rural China, they use it to wash potatoes. And this was found out because of the service levels, the calls that started coming in. Now, we are in research. We talk about demography and behavior. We talk about a product and who will buy my product. Uh, on the behavioral front, what will they use my product or service for is equally important. Because we think we are building it for a particular use, they are using it for something else. Now, when, you, when it comes to innovation, does it, how does it work? What do we look at? We will also need to see how the product is being used. Is it being used for that particular purpose? Or are there alternate ways with which we can go ahead and use it? And why is that pertinent? Why am I talking about it at this point? Let me indulge you in a story. A monk and a disciple, a monk and his disciple, as usual, they just walk around all through the uh, country. And wherever they go, they beg for alms, they get food, and then they eat. One such day, they came up on a ramshackle farm with a husband, wife, and seven kids. Tattered clothes, making a bare bones existence. And then they asked, how do you live? How do you survive? What is it that you do? And the farmer said, we have a cow. We have that one cow, and from the milk that it gives, we barter it for whatever our necessity is for that particular day. So it was a day-by-day -day existence. And that farmer turned around and said, hey, you are a monk. You know everything. Can you deliver me? Can you give me deliverance from this? Uh, the monk said, it'll take time, but it'll happen. And the next day, as the usual thing, they walk off. After some time, the monk looked at the disciple and said, listen, I want you to go back to that farm. Take the cow a few villages away and let it loose out there. The disciple was shocked, surprised. What the heck is he talking about? He said deliverance. Is this what he calls deliverance? But he's a disciple bound with a sacred oath, and he goes ahead and does that. Takes the cow, releases it somewhere else that it's not easy for them to find out. They carry on. A few years later, they come back to the same farm to find out it's resplendent. There's no poverty anywhere. Everybody's looking rich, feeling rich. And the farmer runs towards this monk and says, thank you very much for delivering us. The disciple was curious, and he went and asked the farmer, what happened? Well, somehow after you left, my cow ran away. That was our only 
subsistence. We cried and cried for quite a long time. And then we realized we had to take it up on our own hands. We started looking at how can we bring water up. We devised the pulley system. We started plowing the land, sowing the seed, and everything fell thereafter. What is the moral of the story? Moral for all of us here in the mobile world is that we are too stuck. We are creatures of habit. We are too stuck to the way we have always done it before that we forget that there are alternates, there are simpler ways to do things. But this is the way I have been taught. This is the way I have been doing things. What are you here coming and talking to me about mobile and video works for me or MDI stuff? This is nonsense, isn't it? We are creatures of our own habit, which means we need somebody to come and pluck that donkey and throw it away, throw it down the hill or hide it. Then we will be forced to change. And friends, the change is upon us. You've seen Inception. I'm a big movie buff. Have you seen the movie Inception? Interstellar, then you'll figure out that the one-dimensional world that we lived in where the client contracts the agency, who contracts the field agent, who contracts the interviewer, who goes and uh, recruits respondent is far gone. We live in a multi-dimensional world where we have no idea whom we learn from. Osmosis, what I said earlier, hey, my business is entrepreneurship, I'm the business of insights and I can learn from everywhere, I need to learn from everywhere. From a person who's just joined my company, 20 years my junior, I need to figure out because he's a digital native and he comes up with lots of tips and tricks that probably takes me quite a long time. So I learned from that person, I learned from my software vendor, I learned from my partner who's way junior to me. So this hierarchy is completely gone. That one dimension is moved into, there was a Venn diagram earlier with three circles and then intersection. Imagine that intersection in five dimensions, how is it going to be, right? How is that going to be? That is exactly where we are and we would need to break our own habit to get through. I'm not here to preach. I'm here as a part and parcel of the same industry that we are a part of. Whom do we blame? Whom do we blame? Michael Jackson said it earlier, look into the man in the mirror and ask him to change his ways. Women's Day, it also pertains to ladies, just so that I'm not accused. But it is absolutely important for us to look into. Now, any Australians here? There was a blonde earlier, there you are. Yeah. Now let's imagine for an instant that our pal here decides to walk from Sydney to Darwin, I believe it's on the other coast. There about a long way. Now let's imagine for a second that there's no GPS, there are no road signs. He was dressed as he was early in the morning, maps out how he's going to walk all the way through, he's going to do it in 150 days, throws the map away and starts walking. 150th day, he will probably will find out that he's a few hundred miles away from his destination because of that one degree error in the beginning. A one degree error at the start of his journey screws him up by a few hundred miles if he survives that walk, that is, right? But why is that one degree important? That is absolutely important because of the way we've been doing. How many of you have felt at the end of a research, holy cow, I should have asked a different set of questions? Show of hands. Uh, thankfully, I'm not around a bunch of liars. <laughs> How many of you have felt, oh, if only I could have added that question more, I could have done it differently. All of us have felt it. Yeah. Client side, agency side, whichever side, yeah? We've all felt it. That, that one degree is applicable out here. That one degree is applicable out here, which is exactly why we will need to do things in loops. And I'm gonna quote Jeffrey Henning here. He wrote a beautiful blog on the ongoing buzzword in the research world, which is agile research, agile methodology. Agile has been around for 20, 40 years, attributed to software, but even before that it was there in manufacturing, which is do it, do it small. You just have to look at a horse, walk, trot, canter, gallop. It's not like you run off to 100 kmph in two seconds. So you look at it, you plan, you, and come on, listen, end of the day, if anybody gets up and says, that's not my job, we just have to slap ourselves. End of the day, all of us are salespersons. We are there to sell something. You could be a project manager, you could be an insight head. End of the day, you've got to sell it. Now, the entire mobile concept, how many of us have struggled to go ahead and sell it to clients? How many of us have struggled? Because you just can't go change it en masse. You've got to break it, you've got to nudge it, you've got to do it in smaller loops, convince that person. Hey, don't come and teach me something I've not done before. See, we are creatures of our habit. We just do lip service to that. We just do it in a little bit and say, listen, I've done it, it doesn't work. How is that going to be feasible? We will really need to look at that particular crux, plan, do, tweak, and how many of you are familiar with agile methodology per se? 
please Google it up. I'm not here to take a crash course on agile methodology, but it is basically common sense. That before I plan a journey of a few hundred miles, I start by figuring out if I'm in shape. Can I read the stars? Can I know the way? Can I course correct at every instance? And I'm gonna go back to the Jeffrey Henning's blog and his quote. And he did it as a social experiment. He had a thousand, a client who wanted a thousand interviews done. Now there are two ways to do it. One, you go ahead en masse and do a thousand interviews, or you break it up into 10 chunks, 100 interviews each. Look at it, is it meeting the objective? Can I go back and do something else? What is it that I can look into? Those who are still cribbing about 30 minute, 40 minute, 60 minute questions, hey, there are some clients we cannot change. There are some processes we cannot change, but we can nudge them a little bit. 30 questions survey, fine, can I do it five times? Can I do it 10 times into five? I'm sure Richard from Lumi will be happy about it. But that's the way you break it, and that's the way most of the companies are nudging it and coming into. Absolutely important. Now, how many of you feel here that uh, you are introverts, you are basically shy? Uh, bunch of liars out here. <laughs> how many of you feel you are extroverts, the other extreme? Have you ever heard the word called ambivert? Ambivert? My daughter is a teen now, but when she was young, I used to joke with my wife that she had a switch out here. When she wanted something, she turned it on and water started pouring. She started howling and she got it done. We've got the same switch in us. We are extroverts within a known group. We are introverts when we do not know other people, right? The same thing we bring into our work. Something I do not know, I'm not going to get into it. That's not the way it is done. You know what happens anytime a new idea comes through, it's been, in Facebook, it's been attributed from everywhere, from Arthur Clarke to Abraham Lincoln. But it is true. Anytime somebody comes and tells you an idea, what is the first thing your brain does? Nonsense, it's a horrible idea. Because we are tuned that way. After some time, the same idea comes through, what happens? It probably is a good idea, but it won't work here. It won't work in my company, right? And then some bugger will go and act on that idea, he'll execute that idea, then you'll say, I always knew this was a good idea. <laughs> yeah, I thought about it that time itself. Boss, the time of thinking is gone. It's agile, which means we think we act, we look at it, we think we act, and then we go ahead towards that final objective. But somewhere along the way, we kind of miss it through. Isn't it? Right? Because of the way we've been conditioned. We are creatures of our own habit, which is why we need external viruses to come in. There was a beautiful um, quote that The food is getting smaller, the number of people are increasing. That was in the first or second presentation. Can we please have the video? <clears throat> Just have a look at this video. So the FBI agents, parts of the terrorism task force, NYPD, converged on that apartment building. Now the media had been knocking on her door since early this morning. Okay. In fact, we were here hours <laughs> before police. <laughs> Did you see what happened? That's exactly what we do. Because we've been trained to do things a certain way, even if there is a shortcut, we don't even check. We just go right ahead and jump over. Because I've been trained to do that. I'm FBI. Hey, I'm a researcher. There was another tweet that came in, which I had to read it out to my mom, uh, with all these uh, definitions and designations of data scientists coming. There was a tweet that said, I've told my mom I'm a strip dancer at the club. Please don't tell her I'm a market researcher. Right? By a market researcher. Now, <coughs> I can be offended by it, but I'm taking it in my stride and saying, hey, what can we do to change it? By delivering a lot more. How do we deliver a lot more? By being inquisitive. If I say data processing is my job, this is what I do, technology is already here to throw me away. So from whatever we do, what else can we add? How can we add value? The multi-dimension that I said, it's already collaboration. How many have heard, have you heard about uh, uh, Crowdsourcing is something you know. Yes. Uh, there was a particular thing that I had to Google up, programmatic. Programmatic. Please go Google it up because that's going to take one, uh, the previous presenter, that's going to take one whole segment away because data is already going to be given straight up. You're talking about DIY disruption is happening. Why the entire single uh, chain, the client can talk directly to the client. Won't, isn't that possible, Dave? Yep. So where are we standing? What are we fighting for? And I will delve again to another story 
indulge me guys, I'm a storyteller, so are all of us, we just forget about it. That we spew everything with data and uh, figure out whatever you want. Now, again a monk who lives on top of a hill, not exactly on top, but somewhere by the stream, and every morning goes to fill up a bucket of water, bring it back to his hut. And one particular day when he was filling, he heard a rustle behind, turns behind to see a very hungry tiger ready to pounce on him. Well, instinct kicks in, he throws the bucket, runs across the stream, the tiger follows, he runs up the hill, the tiger follows, and suddenly he finds himself at the edge of that mountain, there's a sheer cliff, the jungle is over, but a very hungry uh, tiger with a, uh, how do I put it, it has to be a smile that my meal is ready. Well, the monk decides that today is not going to be the day I'm going to be eaten by this particular tiger, and he jumps. He jumps, again instinct kicks in, he keeps scratching for some hold somewhere, finds a branch, holds on to it, hangs for a certain time, looks down below to see certain death, looks up to see a very disappointed tiger, but as he turns right near his nose, he finds a ripe and juicy plum. So what does he do? Takes the plum, puts in his mouth, closes his eyes, and enjoys that moment that he is at that point. And why am I specifically talking about this particular moment? Because we can constantly be worried about what happened and what is going to happen, but if we do not change and enjoy where we are today, it's going to be a real difficult cake for us to look into. I'm finishing with a cake here because some earlier presenter said that the food is getting less and the people are getting more. Well, take 25 steps back, guys. Take 25 steps back. Why are we sticking to the same set of clientele? How many of you are here are working with startups? How many of you are working with IOTs? The IOT device manufacturers, IOT app manufacturers, that is a phenomenal client pool that's waiting and none of them have ever heard about research. We started a new division. I'm not here to market that division. We launched it in January. We have 23 clients signed up and done within an agile format. None of them have ever done any kind of research ever. So we say the food is getting smaller looking at our incestuous pool of client agency and the way we work. That is a phenomenal market out there. Should we decide to take a step back, throw the research part out? I'm here to deliver, answer your questions. This is what I do. I answer questions, I provide answers to questions that you might have already or you are going to get. I am in the business of business. I am here to help each of you work your business that's only possible when I go agile. Now I want all of you to stand up please. Please stand up. Okay. The business of communication also includes shedding our inhibitions. How do you break free from a habit? Only when you shed your inhibitions and say, hey, I am happy to be driven. Now, I want you to repeat after me and one set to start dancing when I say. The song is very clear. Come on. Go agile. Go, go, go. Go agile. Go. Go, come on everybody, <laughs> go, 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 go agile, go, 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 go agile, go agile, go, 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 go agile, hey, that's it for the day, I hand it back to you, have fun, go agile guys. <laughs>